Welcome back to the North American Summer Promotion Tournament. TDK got the first win of the series. Two more means a return to the LCS for their top laner, Seraph. And he spoke with us about his time with Counter Logic Gaming and the lessons he has brought to his new team. CLG에서는 저도 잘못한 게 있다고 생각해요. 저도 제가 메타를 잘못 따라갔고 그때 영어 실력도 좋지 않아서 커뮤니케이션도 힘들었고 CLJ 했을 때보다 지금이 비교할 수 없을 만큼 훨씬 더 좋아요. 지금은 제 의견을 들어주는 팀원들도 많고 그 다음에 제가 하고 싶은 거 있으면 은 일단 최소한 시도라도 해보라고 지금 팀에 있는 게 훨씬 자유롭긴 한데 메타가 살짝 저한테 유리하게 바뀌었으니까 그래서 이 팀에 있는 게 훨씬 더 좋아요 결과론적으로 일단 너무 안, CLG보다 훨씬 안 좋은 환경에서 다 같이 열심히 연습해서 여기까지 왔는데 여기서 무너질 수는 없어요 그래서 반드시 이길 거예요 And a very, very Happy Seraph to be here once again. Be even happier to get back into the LCS. He has tried so hard, and I think one of the big things is that he does now kind of have the freedom he was talking about to do what he wants. Like he said, he got really, really good at being able to protect AD carries, and I feel like that's you kind of get like an attribute when you go to each team. CLG's at that time was protecting the AD carry, so having his freedom here, he definitely gets to grow a lot. Yeah, it showed in that last game, too, how much he's grown. If you haven't seen Seraph since he, when he was on CLG, right. and he does get to play more of his style. When he first came over from Korea, he was playing Nidalee, Top, Lissandra, Yasuo. <laughs> None of those were competitively viable, and he was forced onto Shivana, forced onto things like Maokai, right. Top, Renekton, that he wasn't comfortable on. He, now, yeah. he gets to play those champions that he loves so much, and he's much better at Shivana now, and with the TP Smite meta, it's a ban against him yeah. pretty much every game, because he, in the, in the <laughs> promotion tournament, uh, actually was able to just utterly destroy Otter on enemy, and Winter Fox is afraid of that happening here to Altec. I want to see it. You teleport, smite, top cannon. Come on. No. Let's go. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's a nightmare. We'll see what this, <laughs> this last ban is from TDK. Morgana already out. The shields were really preventing Winter Fox from getting everything they wanted. The Sivir can still be picked up, though. They just don't want to mess with two of those spell shields, I guess. Nunu being taken away from Helios. We heard Darshan saying Helios likes to be a playmaker, so maybe being on a champion that can facilitate that would be good. The Rek'Sai, a little too reckless to try and be making those. Yeah, he didn't actually end up making a lot of early game right. plays and affecting the lane. He instead went for a Sight Stone to match Kez, because yeah, Kez yeah. is just so good at vision control. Hecarim has already been taken away to make sure Avalon doesn't get a nice high tier top pick. And the Sivir is taken away. So they deny two things that made it very hard for Winter Fox to take these fights and get the people they wanted, the Morgana and the Sivir. Yeah, they dropped a lot of their previous bands. The Sejuani still on the table. Mm -hmm. The Urgot still on the table. And there it is. Oh, the first pick last game from TDK picked up again first round. So they're prioritizing Gragas over Sejuani. And I, I feel like that's a big pickup for Kaz as well, to be able to just flow into a next game after being a huge factor for the reason of game number one. It's nice for him to get Gragas again. It's going to be a tough start here. What can Helios dig deep and reach into in his champion pool now? He doesn't have to dig that deep. Sejuani is pretty much up there at the surface. She's the cream. She's already risen to the that top. That's true. He'll probably go true. for that when there's an opportunity. It's funny as I'm thinking right now because I'm like, it's Rush, but it's not Rush. It's Helios. <laughs> it's like kind of that same aggressive play style. But no, yeah, you're right. Helios will be fine on Sej. Not a problem there. He's not completely geared to these junglers that have to do damage and have to kill people. I had my players mixed up. Yeah, he likes to start team fights with Avalon. Exactly. Right? They like to exactly. have the Bash Brothers combination. Didn't see it come out in that last game at all. So now with the lock-in, that should be the Sage. The Alistar, we saw that coming out very big for Dignitas, and now will be pickup of Gleeb. 
Gleeb definitely likes to be an initiator, be aggressive. Leona's one of his favorites, so Alistar going in is something he loves to do. Yeah, getting into the thick of those fights. You saw him play Nautilus last game. Yep. This guy loves to be up in the front. He also used to be, I think, a Tarek main for a very long time. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. loves things that can soak a lot of damage. That's the type of support role that he likes to play. Slow waiting on this. TDK definitely using their time here. They need something with wave clear. Corky's off the table, so their AD carry has to be something that's wave clear heavy. Lucian does fill that role, whereas a lot of other AD carries don't so much because Sivir's off the table too. I've definitely seen Lucian carry some games. In the hands of Sneaky mm -hmm. and other AD carries. This should be the lock-in if they keep that. It'll be interesting smoothie to take the Nami here. Definitely have a bit of fight disengage and switch around with that explosive cast, the Nami, and the position reverser. So once again, another composition that can throw Winter Fox every which way and make the fight hard. Disorient them in the fight, but Winter Fox are so far going for a hard engage composition. They want just too. wants to cluster <laughs> as a ball. They want to cluster as a ball, lock you down. Sejuani ultimate on top of a pulverized yeah. headbutt combination from Winter Fox is going to be absolutely deadly. And Freak was talking about it. Sivir does a lot of damage in the situations where people are balled that up. Group. TDK's composition so far, looking a little bally, but <laughs> they also don't all want to be right next to each other. So they can play That's a little true. bit of a scattered fight. It depends Ooh. on what they draft in the top lane, and they're waiting for this. I think this is going to be a TP Smite Nar. Woo! The pickup of Ziggs for a pole vaulter. Not something we've seen for quite some time here, but it's going to be something he has played very often, and we're going to see it thrown into the mix. What will it be countered by a mid lane, or not, sorry, mid lane pickup rather. It looks like this could be Sarah's pickup for that top lane. I'm thinking it's a TP Smite Nar. It does right, very well right. against Maokai. It allows him to continue to peel for his AD carry. And there isn't a whole lot left that he, he could go back to the Mundo. Mm -hmm. We'll see. It does, it, it's hard to get burst out by the Ziggs, but the Ziggs causes so much zone control for the Mundo to actually get into the fight. That is true. He does have, right now, even with the Shivana off the table, there's still a lot of things that Seraph is very threatening on. Looking we'll at, see what he has to go with. We're looking at this Winter Fox composition. If they do get hit by the combo of the Sejuani okay. Alistar, you are eating a Megal okay. Inferno Bomb. There's so much damage to hit in that initial burst. However, if that's missed, I feel like the long fight is going to go over to the favor of TDK with their healing, a bit of those healing, almost almost everybody with passive abilities as well, and then Nami. So it's going to be great. Definitely going to get another Brawl team from both sides. And both teams are actually relatively low damage composition. <laughs> it's, these are going to be long, long fights. Nobody's going to get blown up very quickly unless the squishies get caught. But these frontliners are going to be up for a very long time if this gets to around 35 plus minutes. I'm always down for a few batteries or coins in the glove. <laughs> Go ahead and just put them right in there for a little extra punch. See who can get that out in the early game. We saw the lane swap from TDK last game, right, Zyrene? They were able to get the lanes they wanted and the freeze they wanted, but not come out of it with a lead. It was kind of just consistent for both teams until we really saw that first dragon fight. So maybe a little bit more than just a lane swap on the plate to throw the team off guard. Yeah, both these teams seem to live and die by team fights. Yeah. And it's all about the comps that they drafted for themselves. Both fairly good at team fights. It's responsible by those guys right there. All right, let's start at level one then. Just get the, get <laughs> the, fight, get the fight going. Like the Korea China game last night. Oh, Just man. Four kills at two minutes. Keep it going. <laughs> These games are bloody. They were bloody indeed. Hopefully, we get some more of those. We already had five games for our first set. Now, going into game two, it could be that again. Let us know who you think has the edge going into game two. Tweet hashtag WinterFox, WFX win rather, or hashtag TDK win to at LOL Esports. And we'll be tallying those up throughout the game. Definitely a switch up of champions, except for that Mundo top, Gragas in the jungle for Kaz as well. We'll have to see how these teams come out. Winter Fox did their own stealing of banning the Morgana and taking the Sivir, so we'll see if that plays out for them as well. And last game, we saw Winter Fox have Helios match the Sightstone vision of Kez. That's true. And now, Kez, he's going Sightstone on Gragas. He just prioritizes that vision control yeah. so highly, and it really helps his team out. That's right, and Gleep says that Kez's vision control is just one way that he tries to keep his lane safe. I used to play with Kez back on Cloud9 Tempest, who is now the jungler for TDK. Uh, he's overall a good player. Um, he has really good vision control. If you watch TDK's games, he almost always goes sightstone and makes sure his lanes have vision so that they can just play aggressive without putting themselves in danger. 
that's what TDK is all about. Right now, it's these solo lanes, but Louis GG had a fantastic game as well. I want to yeah. see if he's able to bully this lane if they end up in a two-on-two. Because two. Altec, I mean, he's kind of the bar for, oh, you call yourself an AD carry in the LCS. Mm -hmm. They got to get through him. <laughs> that they do. See if they can cut through him this time. He'll be throwing the boomerangs. The wards are out. To make sure they know of all the lane swaps going on. It looks like this time it will be matched up. A little That means a little more jungler intervention towards the mid lanes, which we were wondering how that would work between Kaz and oh, Alex as well. Did with that see the him? swap. That ward was actually... I don't know if it's on. That ward was actually a little bit shallow. Well, they'll know in a second. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. That ward actually did not see them go past it. It's too shallow. It's not put up. Altec uh, is backing. Yep. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think they want this. They have to back to avoid the lane swap. So, yeah, they, wow. did, they didn't see Luigi G and Smoothie off that ward. Nope. That ward was placed to the right of the little uh, protruding part mm -hmm. of the wall instead of on top of it. When you put it on top, it's exposed in the lane. You can hide it sometimes if you put it on the right side. So they hid the ward, right. but the ward didn't give them the valuable vision that they needed. And look at this smoothie. Oh dear. He's got his straw and he's saying, suck on this. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like he's doing a damn good job so far. Tries to get a little heal damage out. Helios still going to be able to get through that pretty well. And that was controlled nicely. That's no Nautilus that smoothie is on, but they, Winter Fox didn't kind of just get scared and run away from the situation. Yep. Gave him information, gave him some harass onto the top laner and the jungler. The jungle is so hard to do when you're harassed in it. Sometimes you have to actually back before you can right. do your second buff. Helios, he does have his smite though because of the jungle route, and he's able to smite his red and get some HP off it. It slows him down a little bit though. That's, a, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. He did get a double jungle going, and TDK gets to continue to double jungle. Whereas Maokai, Avalon's actually going to come back to that top lane and try to soak the experience. It's just Louis here, though, so he's actually very safe. Yeah, to yeah, soak I was going to say, he did it at the perfect time because you do have that roam towards the mid lane right now of Smoothie just hanging out. Nice, Avalon's able to start picking up the Siege Wave, so not really missing too much. I mean, he's already up a few CS, which will keep accruing in his favor. You got three heading towards the top side, though, so that could be where it gets scary for him. And there's four heading to that top side right now. Oh, you're now. right. There is a fourth. <laughs> this is this is definitely not safe for Avalon. They're going to barrel their way in here. No pun intended. But they're going to try to get damage onto this turret. And here's the thing is, Meteos, or sorry, Meteos, Helios. Yes. They both end in Os. Helios backed. So he's not able to actually defend this turret just yet. So they're going to be clearing these waves as fast as they can. It'll hit the turret, and then there'll be a two yep. on four. And Kaz's positioning is so good. Easily body slam over the wall to exit as well. And this makes the approach for Medi or Helio. You got Medi I, I got you. I got you. Helios a little bit harder. And the pressure could just be enough for the turret. TDK says, you guys switched away from us. We're going to try to match those lanes up as soon as we can. Good smite there. The yeah, blasting smite was. to clear the wave out. So the back was worth it from Helios. And now they get that damage onto the bottom turret from Winter Fox's side. That turret's at about 475 HP. Yep, they're close. Whereas the top lane turret is actually 680, so they're about 200 damage shy, despite putting so many resources in that top lane. Doesn't look like they'll have too much of a lane to match up then if that turret in the bottom lane is gone. Yeah, another problem though is Seraph was not able to get any experience, get any, he kind of soaking yep. it with four people, but not any solo experience. He's once again behind Avalon. Definitely a corrected situation from things we saw in the spring split there for Avalon. Or I'd say improved, not really corrected. Learning that that gank was very, very big for the other team. Teleport to lane and kind of just die after the teleport. There they worked it accordingly and staved off any deaths. So here's just 100 gold lead right now due to the farming back and forth. 34 CS to Alex each in the mid lane. Still playing very strong against Pole Belter. Like Freak said, he did well. There's no minions. Porky. Oh, that's well in the air got. That turret range. You don't really want to take that many. Avalon got the sniper upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> He's able to pop his potion here on Luigi G's side. He's going to get some healing oh. smoothie, but the pressure is actually completely reversed in this lane now because Avalon has almost no fear of dying right. until smoothie completely heals Louis back up. Yeah, definitely. And then he'll have it. You shouldn't allow the laner to get out and take that much <laughs> he has by himself in a 2v1. So TDK. Well, back and forth in the lane are going against them here, but will Winter Fox be able to use it? 
Glebe on the initiator. Looks like he's just staying back here. They're not going to really be able to kill Seraph right off the bat without too much Ooh. crowd control, but Helios. they are making sure he stays off. Helios snuck into top lane. Just stalking Louis right now. Heck yeah. So back up. up to full HP. And here's the thing is if Louis goes aggressive off having full HP and Avalon being so far forward, he doesn't even have to. They capitalize immediately. Oh, right onto Smoothie. I don't know if there's much they can do. Both flashes were used actually to get him. Smoothies and the follow flash coming in from Avalon. Yeah. Avalon actually flashed first. Right. Just saying, yeah. you know what? There's no way out for you. Mm -hmm. And this is actually going to be a lot of experience going to, over to Avalon. Avalon level six to Seraph, still level four. Trying to pick up the scraps of CS in this bot lane. This, once again, the lane swap going in favor of Winter Fox and TDK. They're still struggling with it yep. off of another death from Smoothie early. Helios is finding his way into these lanes via Pink Ward, via just walking up from the brush. Those tower shots that yep. Louie took made him have to relieve the pressure and wait, and that gave the window for Helios to get in the brush. So when you make a mistake like that as an AD carry, your support gets hurt for it. <laughs> It's true. Definitely difficult things. They're going to have to repair here. A little bit of a lead going towards that Avalon right now has been big for Winter Fox. He's definitely trying to put down some defense last game for the team. But TDK had too much of a lead there. So it's good that Winter Fox starts to grab a little bit of a lead. We know them as a team with kind of a two to 3,000 gold lead. They can work with things like that. And actually, they're a team that can come back from being down in gold when they're fighting. I want to see what they do with this on Avalon. If this was a kill onto Pobelt or Altec, you're much more optimistic about Winter Fox's chances in this game. When it's on Avalon, he has to do something with this gold lead. He is getting handed a huge level in gold lead over Seraph, and Seraph is going to eventually get challenging Smite yeah. and possibly be able to deal with Avalon and just use the team fight to his advantage. So the big problem here is, what does Avalon do with this? How does he apply pressure as this solo laner who's been gifted all this CS and a huge advantage? So much CS. Bottom lane. Yep. He's not getting pushed off just yet. Seraph, however, is. Winter Fox is allowing the minions to just go down to the turret, denying as much as they can here. That works out well for them. So they start to pull a 2k gold lead ahead. Definitely getting those bands of Morgana and the pull of Sivir here has helped the laning phase out quite a bit for them. Yeah, Smoothie played a lot of Morgana. He was pretty much Morgana for the last... Uh, bit of the season and into playoffs as well. Almost turned into Morgana. Pretty much. <laughs> his, Gotta take those comfort champions away. Yeah, his defensive supports were usually Sona and Janna. So this Nami is actually a little bit different for him. Almost got the bubble there. That's gonna be turning. Yeah, a few more shots. They're able to get the culling pressure out. Like you said, the bubble just missing on that. So we do have now both turrets down. We'll see where the AD carries go to as Winter Fox Helios, always want that early dragon, is going to again be able to pick it up for the team. They only got two dragons last game before TDK took their own two and practically ended the game right after that. It was only a short time after, so see if Winter Fox can keep these on the table and use dragons to their advantage this time. It was a big uh, problem for them, but they lost three or four each dragon fight. Yeah, you gotta get those early dragons and make sure that you can contest them later. Winter Fox are definitely in a position to do that. They actually had a lot of people helping them out at the Dragon, then they left Helios as soon as that top lane turret went down so that they could catch these minion waves with the appropriate players yeah. on their team. Bottom lane, looks like it's actually... Double check that. It's going to be pushing out. And Helios is setting up alongside Avalon to actually catch this big wave bottom and make sure that nobody misses out on this experience in CS. Thought he was going to dip into the brush, but they stay safe. They're not going for any engage there. However, Kez, with a bit of a roam into the jungle, is going to get some deep wards in. Maybe a problem here for Pole Belter in just a few seconds, but it looks like Kez is actually going to turn his attention down towards the bottom side of this map, along with Seraph. They want to try and get their own first blood back on trying the map. To, trying to wrap around, placing those wards on his way. He got that sight stone second. Doesn't, yep, look at that. Oh, the bubble missed. Oh, the bubble did miss. They go back into the fight. However, Mego Inferno goes across three people. Smoothie, do it, Louie. No flash on Avalon. And Seraph, Kaz still staying in the fight with the red buff, trying to give out the help. And he actually pulls out the kill secured for himself. A nice roam down for Alex Itch. Stops Pole Belter from actually getting any closer than the Mego Inferno bomb in that instance. Routed him off, cut him off there at the pass. And now Al Altec actually gets to push this top lane out and get himself some CS. The TP from Seraph, though, he gets to catch a wave pretty much the first time in the game. 
has been falling off the surfboard ever I since. wish I were joking, too. He, he has not been it's able to true. get true. He's 30 CS behind right now, and he's only been picking up scraps as they've come into him. It's not been easy. But again, on that Mundo, we'll see if he can be troublesome as he gets his items. It's going to be a little bit longer this game. And Winter Fox is using a bit of their advantages very nicely here. Pole Belter not wanting that to go away. Oh my god. Nicely clears it. Louis GG. Is that another Essence Reaver? You did better not be another e that Boom. Essence Reaver. Boom! What are you doing? He bought it just for you. Oh my god. Well, he said, you, you said people were going to be bunching up a little <laughs> bit in this one, so it works. Okay, I, get, I guess Piercing Light doesn't crit. You got me there. He's got the CDR <laughs> on his culling for wave clear. Oh. Get it. People were complaining about crit being too RNG. So Louis, don't use it. Yeah, Louis like, all right, you know. I'll make a new meta for myself. That's right. This is... I've never At seen At least this, you know how much I've damage never you're seen always doing. Exactly. There you go. There you you go. never fake there yourself you out. You never be like, oh, I hope the crit happens. Oh, oh nope. I went too far. Yep. Never. Never going to overextend for those crits, those lucky chances. But I've never seen him go with this build in, in any of the games that I've seen, except this set. And it's not something that's going to throw your opponent off. You're not like, whoa, if we get shot by that yeah. once, it's front-end damage. <laughs> he, we can't. he gets mono back. <laughs> It's interesting, that is for sure. It's it's definitely his own thing. The only thing that would throw it off is if the 10% CDR caught you a little bit by surprise where you're like, okay, wow, why you have enough time before he dashes he, again? Yeah, exactly. Why is he able to dash so, so soon? And how is he able to clear faster? Than well, he, really? but look at this, Alex. Oh, uh, all the ults Alex, there. Alex, indeed, he doesn't really get a chance to move. It looks like he just fell forward on that one. And Winter Fox able to clean this nicely up. The Vengeful Maelstrom keeping them from taking too much damage. We'll see what they do with this. Alex also blew Flash on that one trying to get out, so he thought the team was going to yep. be able to help him there. There's a 3v Alex there, and he didn't even get to use the Hyperkinetic Position Reverser. They popped multiple ultimates, yeah. four of them, to try and get him. Huh. So interesting that Poe Belter decided to go for the Athenes this game as well, even though the Seraph again went for Mundo. They don't really have a way to cut him down at all this game. I guess Glebe did bring Ignite. They switched that one off, so I lie. Ignite really is there. It's still a really good point, though. Morello yeah. Namicon is invaluable against somebody like Seraph, who wait, yeah. waits to get low before he actually uses his ultimate. He tries to bait out his whole health pool, mm -hmm. make sure he's not wasting any of it. The Athenes is good, though, for just keeping your mana up in these yeah. team fights. Huffing bombs. And once you do get an assist, it's almost like a reset for your mana pool. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Great wards here coming out of TDK, 13 minutes into the game. They have littered the bottom side of the map. And they really are feeling no pressure right now with this vision knowledge. Easy cleanup by Pobelter in the mid lane with blue buff, so he's going to keep just spitting out skills to see what is up with Altec's build. He's sitting on 1,100 gold right now, so he's actually almost ready to go back. I thought you were like, what is he building? I'm like, not another no. AD carry. <laughs> not another Essence Reaver. What's going on? No, he's, he's building standard. Right. Whew. Just has under the amount of gold he needs. So he's waiting, farming that top lane, hopefully staying safe from Louie and Smoothie at this point. Both teams feel like they're a little too comfortable with not doing anything right now. Obviously, Dragon's coming up, but they are giving each other a lot of room to do whatever they want here. Oh, he got the that, ultimate out of that. That was nice. That's what we're looking for. A little bit of pressure top lane, and that's big for 44 seconds. That Dragon's coming up. Just to shove the waves out. Yeah. Fairly easy to deal with as Sivir. The thing here is they have their ultimates back up. They aren't going to have Altex up just yet. When that dragon comes up, it'll be a little bit short since it is a two-minute cooldown. Yep. Be about 50 seconds before it's up. And that's a big part of their teamfight initiation, getting Maokai into there. Yep. Also don't have that ignite. If that, actually, TP doesn't need to come in from Seraph. He's already in the bottom lane. And we do have Avalon trying to run out there. So good positioning here to start off. 10 seconds on to Dragon. Game two looking pretty good for Winter Fox with a an early lead as they set up here. Looks like they got themselves into position first, even though they have less people there. They're That's not big. afraid to set it up. They're going to get that Scuttle Crab, and they're also mm -hmm. not going to have themselves collapsed on just yet because Louis isn't there. Gleeb is going to have his Ignite up in 20 seconds. So he'll have it up in time for the fight if it does happen. And Altec, they're actually not going to get punished for that popped ultimate. And that's going to be the second dragon going over to Winter Fox now. Off of TDK kind of trying to manipulate waves and just catch experience. A little more focus on that, you're right. Interesting that the dragon went over so easily with how many wards we just saw on the bottom side of the jungle. But 
Looks like they're completely okay with it. We saw two dragons go right over to Winter Fox before TDK got their first two last game, and then they took the victory. So all in due time for them. They're not really worried. Like you said, more wave management seems to be the priority for their early game. Yeah, also waiting on power spikes too. Mm -hmm. The Lucian Essence Reaver power spike is definitely getting pale in comparison up. to the IE. Waiting for Urgot to hit his item spikes. They do have the Cinder Hulk completed onto Seraph. But That's a good point as well, right? They You're need to wait for the Mermon to yeah. come up, so it doesn't kind of matter if you plateau on an Essence Reaver. Yeah, you so asked me earlier not about, critting. about like Seraph and Mundo's power spikes. Right. A lot of this is TDK waiting for when they do hit these spikes. Because though, is he going to bop Helios? He is. That could be a bop indeed. Oh, hits him right back, so he gets kind of stuck on the wall as well. The heal comes out, but it's not going to provide enough damage or speed for Kaz. He tries to ride the wave in, but it's... Oh, too little, too late. And it's just a quick scuffle between the junglers here. But they know where the presence is of TDK now. We'll see how Winter Fox kind of sets up for this. Helios got caught on the wall when he got knocked mm -hmm. back. That actually saved him versus Kez. If he had gotten knocked further back, it's harder to get the Arctic Assault over a wall. You can't go through people with it. You get stopped. Nope. So good play. Good play. Good play, wall. Yeah, good play, wall. <laughs> Kez has been on point with his barrels, though, and the fact that he had yeah. the presence of mind to turn that very quickly mm -hmm. was good. He got the flash for it and the ultimate from Helios. The team's been working together in the sense that that's a difficult ult to work around, especially when they have a team that's going to not super bounce people around like the last one did, but they still have a team that's going to be popping people up, reversing out, make sure you get the right barrel down, and there has been good communication there. Kaz def definitely has a strong voice the team listens to. Yeah, this team has a lot of disengage on TDK. They can keep mm -hmm. people at arm's length. Nami really good at disengaging. Uh, also having the Gragas alongside that. But then Alex and Louis need to stay arm's length away and actually pop their damage out. Well, here we Kez, go. not afraid of this. Good. Talking about engaging. Almost saw it there. Avalon with the teleport up does have the Righteous Glory as well. He is actually going to be in the fight, so no teleport needed there. And we're still waiting. You know, we hear chat and other people say a lot about these junglers, game-changing ultimates from both Sej and Gragas, and that's exactly what can happen. We haven't seen a good hit from Helios yet, and that could really change things around. It's those late games, too. Got to pay attention to the Alistar mm -hmm. as he yeah. gets into them. Saw as, Kiwi Kid. As Kiwi Kid showed us. Four to five man alties there, just as significant as what Meteos was hitting with his Sej, so. They changed the game indeed. Body slam. Oh. Oh. Just kind of rubbing up against the wall for a second. He got a skin itch. He was thanking it for earlier. <laughs> it's all right. These walls are just stunting Kez at every turn. Everything. Every turn. Oh, Glebe and Helios want this. Is it going to be the old Kez gets hit as well? But they bump Alex each out. Is it enough for him? He gets the resistances from the position reverser, okay. and somehow he's still alive. The shield into the brush. The vision is there for Winter Fox, but they just can't collapse on the fight somehow. They seem more scattered, and TDK again stays in this ball. They cannot be touched, in the back line can stay Sheriff's there. Not dead. Here comes Louis now with the damage, piercing light through Alex. Avalon as well as Glebe, they get taken down and they are going to start finishing off the last members they have eyes on here of Winter Fox TDK. Come wow. out big. That was huge. You have these Reaper two done. tanks just soaking so much damage and Alex Each is going to become, for all intents and purposes, another tank. Thought he was dead right off the bat. Oh yeah, he got the hyper right. reverser off and he is level 12, so it's rank 2. He was able to get himself that huge boost in resistances. At rank 2, it is 80 or 90 resistances. Right. Armor and magic resist, just able to soak so much damage. And then he had another terror capacitor. You see, he starts with the fair, and it's like, oh, wait, nope, it's gone now. And then he gets out of the fight. And he's like, oh, wait, I have another. And it's back up again. And then he gets healed from Smoothie, and the fight is just kited off. Avalon is off on the side trying to deal with Louis GG, and then he runs back in to try and regroup as this peeling uh, type top laner. But Louis GG takes out the jungler, takes out Helios, and man, just the damage he's able to output here. Look who's low on mana, but still gets mana back to fire more spells. <laughs> Louis GG! Louis GG! <laughs> oh, man. Essence Reaver. It's, br it's actually becoming quite brilliant if he's just spell slinging all the time. That's crazy. The, you know, I'll, I could list what the item does and what it gives him, but you're seeing that's it. what he's purchasing. It's giving him a lot of mana. <laughs> what I really liked there as well in that fight was Alex each just pursuing consistently 
when he was like 300 health in front of all tech, he was still running at all tech. Yeah. Almost was the person that made all tech flash, obviously with the other aggression towards him, but didn't give up and was trying to do the most damage if he was going to go down. And Urgot will do, will take less damage to be tankier if he's being offensive. Right. The Zon touch both augment or his passive exactly. will reduce the damage output of all tech and actually keep him alive longer if he's auto attack trading with him. So that's really good on Alex's part. And it's really crazy that everybody collapsed around that fight immediately mm -hmm. because Alex is the substitute. TDK are just playing group up, fight, wave clear a little bit, but they're getting out wave clear right now because Sivir and Ziggs are just massive yeah. in terms of that part of the game. Louis GG is their main source of wave clear in this composition. Right. It, it all it looks good in their in their own rights of what they're doing, right? The fights look great for TDK, that mid push. Obviously looking great because of the wave clear from both server and pole belter, or all tech and pole belter, I should say. So hopefully yeah. Winter Fox would love to say they could not go for these and stay away from the fights, but it is an inevitable thing in TDK. Obviously, this is practically uncontested, and then TDK has served up a fight here. The Mega Inferno pops down Smoothie. That's been their heal throughout the fights. Do they still have the positioning to take oh, it down? Louis. And Louis GG has just put himself in the middle of the pit, and he goes down as Winter Fox sparks a fight that they actually wanted to get. Nice ult by Pole Belter there to change things up. Yeah, really nice stacking there of the CC and the damage from Winter Fox. Really good job of taking that fight. Now they get the wave clear, but they aren't able to continue this. So they get kills off it. They get themselves a lead in gold. They give up the dragon, but TDK weren't able to come out with anything from that fight besides the dragon. This was really just the tidal wave came across, and that's your disengage tool. They used it as an engage tool, mm -hmm. and then everybody from TDK ran in. Kez got collapsed on immediately. Helios was able to just throw his ultimate over his shoulder right. and then get out of the fight. This is not a composition from TDK that wants to engage. It's counter-engage. The Sivir ultimate came yeah. down pretty much after the tidal wave had already passed. Right. And if you alt first, you're going to lose in this one. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of true. You don't want that to be the case, but... As we look through the inventories, Mura Mana now finished up here for Alex H. He's going to be even bigger, and he is able to put that Glacial Shroud as well as in his inventory, easy for me to say, to stop all tech from really cutting through him as well. The Infinity Edge into Phantom Dancer builds, one that Freak likes, getting all the RNG. RNG build. All day. Why not? Seeing as well, Avalon started to get tanky. Doesn't have too much HP on himself other than that Righteous Glory, but he is trying to stay alive as long as possible. Obviously, in these fights, he had a, a decent early game. Didn't get pushed out of the 2v1 lane too hard, and he stayed alive. So he's definitely been, or he's got to be, I should say, feeling more comfortable. And Alex Each actually hit his Muramana power spike before that previous fight at 21 minutes. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't able to utilize it. He didn't get a position reverser off. They were not in a position to fight, and that looked like the team not being on the same page. TDK wanted to engage without an engage composition, and Alex was not there with them. He was not. He was not like I'm going to go in as Urgot. No, no, you know, you, you want to kite back and be defensive and yep. soak as much damage as possible on that champion while outputting as much damage as you can. So TDK need to kind of take a check of things and make sure that they're all on the same page because Winter Fox are getting absolute control over the Baron. Right. Yeah. So many wards right now. And this coverage isn't being really contested whatsoever. TDK is not sweeping. Their pinks are very defensive in this situation. But they do have vision. Winter Fox, oh, they just got a sweeper up, and they have not swept that push. <laughs> Let's see what TDK does here. The teleport is up for Seraph. Luigi closing in from the top side, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to get any window of a fight opportunity. Like you said before, not... Looking for the engage, but would love to take a pick if they got one. Well, Seraph is split pushing bottom. He's going to get this mm -hmm. hurt, so they're looking for a fight. They're looking to collapse on whatever they can. Oh, and there it is. Kite in the fight would be great right now for TDK with Seraph split pushing. He is not going to teleport into this one. It looks like they've called him to stay in the bottom lane, and the rest of TDK is going to try to get out of this one as safe as possible. They've done so only losing Alex, and I think this still keeps that dragon possibility alive. Or, I'm sorry, Baron. Yeah, Baron definitely on the table Absolutely. for Winter Fox. They have the win the vision control, and now they're gonna start it up. So we got Kaz on the other side. The smite is still there. Anything that happens right now goes up to a 50-50, and you're right, Cyrene. Nicely played for the teleport pressure. They pull Seraph away from the bottom lane. 
Yeah, they get the TP out of him, and Avalon keeps his own instead of having to use his to answer. Right. Now they're going to go out straight after this mid lane. Ziggs off on the side. Gonna have the wave clear in time. They're trying to get wrapped Great. around here. Great defensive bubble from Smoothie there. It could have been a nice engage from Helios. No alt, but it could have got somebody stuck right as they were leaving the turret. Getting kind of tight here. Every team holding their breath for the next engage. I feel like it's going to mean so much more. A second tier turret, possibly even an inhibitor, depending on where the fight goes down. The waves right now, really not in anyone's favor. One in the top for Winter Fox here, and one's pushing bottom for TDK. So, don't see too much here in the lull of the game. It's definitely up for TDK to find a way back into these fights, though. Winter Fox seems to have the upper hand. Winter Fox is forcing a lot of fights. Mm -hmm. You can do that with the Sivir and Righteous Glory. You saw Alex popped his ghost to try and run away. It's not fast enough. His spider legs can't <laughs> take him that far. The Sivir will too hard so quickly. Got a serpentine. <laughs> do the grapevine. Yeah. And then you serpentine in hope of dodging the point click auto attacks. <laughs> and then you, that's what happens to you. Yeah. But the fact they were able to get that TP off of Seraph is really big, because Seraph thrives off of that pressure. Now he can't split push and do what he loves right. to do. Seraph's kind of put on cooldown for a couple minutes. Indeed he is. Also is not a TP to a turret, so he'll be waiting even a little longer time. As we start to see TDK now grouping towards middle. Looks like they are feeling confident about getting into a fight here. 30 seconds onto Dragon and maybe get some pokes onto Altec or anybody that wants to show themselves in the mid lane. Almost. Oh, sweeps it out. This is actually the first game of Ziggs that Poe Belter has played all year. Mm -hmm. Used to see him on it before, but definitely not something that he went towards throughout the split. It is a little better now. It has gotten some changes, some quality of life. Athene's is good again for him. So we need wave clear. He's yeah. the guy that you're going to call. But the fact he's able to pull it out now is really good because last time they suffered from wave yeah. clear. TDK had that problem, but it's just Louis GG who can wave clear for them. And when Louis GG isn't there, you lose your middle turret like they did earlier. Now they're posturing for this dragon, trying to contest it. Ziggs is great at controlling objectives, holding choke points off. And if you come through a choke point against Sejuani, with a Sivir, yeah. she's going to be right there to capitalize on when multiple people are trying to squeeze through at once. Let's see where and how TDK approached this fight. We saw the Tsunami used right in the beginning of the tidal wave. Yeah, you're right. It's all about the approach. And it's about the approach. They're they split use off right it now. once again. That's, again, not the disengage. TDK goes in straight for Altac. He gets flipped around and flashes oh! on the outside. Blown up is Louis XGG, but Alex is also getting hit up in the fray. A double kill now coming in for Altec as they focus down into Seraph, but he's going to pr probably be able to get out of that one. He is just booking it right now. Where can Winter Fox go from this? Woo! The flash onto Smoothie. They pull the Okie Doke and take him down, and now Seraph. He will be taken down as that alt falls off. Burning Agony going to try and get him out of some of this crowd control, but it won't be enough. Seraph goes down, and that is going to be a very good fight coming in for Winter Fox. Once again, they're using the tidal wave to try and engage these fights. And when you're split like that, Alex Siege and Luigi G, their two damage dealers were off on the right, immediately collapsed on by yeah. Avalon and Altec, as well as Helios. Helios threw his ultimate and hit the damage dealers. Now they're off the field, and the fight just trails off. They can go for Baron immediately. Oh, keep him out of the pit. Boom. Oh, he 2K. can still, he can still get in. Time. He can still get in. He's got no time. Oh! No. It's so close. Stop he hitting the it. damage. Oh, they stopped. Oh, the teamwork. It's too oh, good. He's now he to steal it. Oh, Kaz. Oh. He goes in for the valiant attempt. The Winter Fox communication is too strong. Oh, numbers are hard sometimes. <laughs> you, you predict the auto attack. You predict everybody smacking it, but nope. Just a little bit off there. Riot, please, RNG smite. Yep. <laughs> 720 value smite. So close. Yep. But that only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, not in Baron attempts. This goes now over to Winter Fox. And whatever lanes were pushed at them, they'll now be able to definitely get over back on the side of TDK and start delivering a little bit more pressure. A great switch around here for Winter Fox. Now on the blue side. It's actually, teams kind of focusing on getting red here throughout the tournament. There's Smoothie. Uses the ultimate before. You can hear the silver ultimate come out after. Boom, right there. 
Helios hitting both damage dealers. Altec flashes over the wall, gets the crit on top of the Ziggs bomb damage. Immediately, both damage dealers are dead. This is just tank lines at this point and cleanup. Smoothie, he eventually just tries to come to help, and he gets himself killed too. This is where I bet Louis GG would be hoping that he actually had some of those crit passes. There you shots, go. Where you really actually need to do the damage that's being delivered to you. Yeah. <laughs> Essence Reaver me once. Shame on me. <laughs> Essence Reaver me twice. Uh, I guess so. And never gonna get Essence Reaver again. <laughs> that's how the saying goes, right? Never again. Oh, they do have the Mikhail's and the Quicksilver Sash now for the safety out of that Glacial Prison, out of a Twisted Advance. Something that will lock down Louis and hopefully the damage will be his to deliver. It's going to be difficult with the build he's gone for, and Winter Fox knows they can continue to pressure mid lane. These barrened up minions are making it that much easier. Still, a bit of that wave clear from the culling is all they need. It's not going to be as easy the next time, Zyrene. Culling isn't a five second cooldown, man. It's going to be tough. Yeah, Sensory won't help you with that. No, no, it won't. Actually, it will. 10% CDR, but it won't get it down to five. Oh. <laughs> what they're going to do here. They're milling about a little too Which, much, giving TDK room to find an entry and the pressure. Trying to force it. He's yeah. trying to get to Poe Belter. He's got the ghost on. <laughs> oh, oh but he left the team. Gauge. The back line becomes the middle part of the fight now, and that's not what TDK wanted to have happen. Altec's getting hit up here, but I think he is just going to shred Alex each down. He does so. Kez is going to be the next focus, as that is Poe Belter's kill to come in, and TDK once again get pushed back. Winter Fox with a very nice fight win there. Both are damage dealers down, and Altec just crit. running over this game. This is the Altec that TDK was expecting in game right. one. The CS monster. Up 40 CS, 605 team fighting. That's a surrender from TDK. This is exactly what Seraph in general was talking about, Zyrene. Pole Belter, 706. Altex, 605. Those two, two lanes need to be shut down. Those two lanes flourish this game. Pole Belter did more than twice the damage of anybody on TDK. That sounds painful. On that Ziggs. That is such a hard champion to deal with. And you could see they wanted to run in there and engage, but Winter Fox was going to have none of that. TDK trying to engage with kind of haphazard yeah. engage. They're ghosting forward. They're using the Nami Tidal Wave to try and start these fights, and then Altec will pop his ultimate and just run straight around it. So it was really hard to start the fights, but you could see that the tendencies of TDK is they want to fight. So when they draft a right. more hard engage composition for themselves, they're going to thrive on that. But the problem here is Winter Fox just had a huge boost tomorrow. They're like, you know, I can handle Alex in yeah. the mid lane. I can Ex get exactly. a huge lead in the bot lane. So Altec and Pobelt are both having deathless games with high performance value. That's what TDK was afraid of. Well, we'll definitely get four games, that's for sure. And TDK is going to have to wonder what's going to come out of those mid lanes now. We expected that to be a very strong game. But like you said, with those scores, Pole Belter and Altec are going to be carrying into the next game very, very strong. I'm excited to see what these guys have for each other. Obviously, that ban of the Morgana and the pick of the Sivir hurt the bottom lane of TDK. The Nami pick, like you said, wasn't something we had really seen from Smoothie throughout the Challenger series. And now that he brings it out, it didn't seem like a very big comfort pick for the team in general. He seemed to be doing it, but the team wasn't organizing well around the alts, around the engages. Yeah, and Smoothie, he has been calling more shots now on the team that's speaking pretty much all English yep. across the board. Absolutely. Louis Gigi is kind of the one who's left out to dry. But the tidal wave being their main source of engage in Smoothie, you know, he, before when we heard him actually on the uh, the uh, sounds of the game afterwards, yeah. where he's calling that somebody's bound up for three seconds. Right. He's like, this guy's bound, LeBlanc is caught, right? You can't really do that with the Nami. You have to just yeah. call the bubbles. And he wasn't landing a whole lot. He was tidal waving to start fights, right. but they weren't fights that people were able to follow up and Winter Fox weren't able to deal with. They were completely able to deal with it, and a lot of that was due to the Sivir. Due to the Sivir, indeed. Quickly teleporting out of that top lane instantly to make sure they didn't get matched up as well. But right now, we're going to check in with the analyst desk to get their thoughts on Winter Fox's first win of the series. Thank you, Riv. Tying it up here, 1-1. One, one. Yeah. The first thing I want to look at is what they were talking about in terms of pick spans, getting rid of Corky, Morgana, and taking Sivir. So we're moving three of the champions that TDK had played so comfortably with in the first game. I think it's very smart by Winter Fox, honestly. It's been a long time since we've seen TDK play. We've seen them win some games, lose some games. And, of course, they prep for this match. And you're like, okay, what do they come out with? What do they think is strongest? And... 
oh, okay, a whole different set of champions. Let's go remove those. You know, you compare that to what happened in the Dignitas series where um, I think Fusion banned intelligently. They know what winner, they, they know what Dignitas plays. Okay, ban the Annie. Oh, okay, Ziggs is big. Okay, right, and they start adding the bans in, right? Similar kind of thing here. Winter Fox is very smart to keep changing up what is actually big, what's actually working. In a game like this, you expect, okay, we'll just kind of keep the bans the same now. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, that was a that was good on Winter Fox for recognizing that. I want to move into the early stages of the game here. TDK, we saw the opportunity for them to, very early in the game, cut off the top laner and Gra and Kez in the jungle. Or no, sorry, Kez is jungling uh, and um, Helios in the jungle mm -hmm. in that top lane. They didn't do it properly. And Zion Spartan, you're somebody who has. Um, experience th with this as CLG has done this to many teams there in the lane swap, putting four, pushing beyond the turret and zoning them off. Here they didn't do that, and I feel like it was a missed opportunity to get themselves an early lead that this kind of team needed, I feel, um, being only that kind of two major threats with Urgot and Lucian. Yeah, I definitely felt like Winter Fox had the better late game team comp, and you kind of saw that with the turret dive. Um, they let um, Helios and Avalon walk under the turret. And it's four against two. You shouldn't really be able to survive a 4v2 turret dive. You don't let them walk under the turret. You stop them, you proxy the wave, and then you stand there. They're not going to be able to walk between four people and get to the turret safely. And if they had gotten that double kill, at, or at least forced them off the turret, then they would have been able to snowball the game a lot harder, and then they would have been able to get to their strong mid game and potentially overpower Winter Fox. But you saw that Ziggs pick coming in really strong, and since they didn't get that tower dive off, Things went south really quickly. Yeah, I have to say the Ziggs pick in response to what I was asking you guys yeah. in the last segment as to whether or not he could get to those kind of farm AOE champions. Well, he's proven that he can. Impressive score lines from both him and Altec. So stepping up big there, that's what TDK was saying they're going to have to look out for. Yeah. Well, all right, they've stepped up. So what's TDK going to do in response, I guess? I mean, TDK needs to clean up the games a little bit. I do want to touch on you, you talked about the mid laners real quick because uh, now both times we've seen a very aggro matchup, right? Urgot into Ziggs. Urgot can try to bully his point out. But hey, props to Pope Elter. Both mid laners now in disadvantageous matchups have survived the laning phase and just gotten farmed. So hey, both mid laners doing a good job from having a disadvantageous matchup. Talking about TDK, though, and what they need to do to win. I just think they need to clean up their game. They tried to play the exact same style. They lost server. They played Nami. It works okay as a surrogate Nami. Problem is their positioning was so bad that they couldn't keep that squishy back line alive. Right? You still have the slow burn Mundo. You still have the slow burn front line jungle Gragas here. But... When your damage dealers drop away in the team fight, then you can't make that comp work anymore. And it was it was a positioning error. I think compositionally they were okay-ish. Maybe you drop the Ziggs ban in and try to remove some of that power, but I mean they didn't do anything like really very different. Well, let's jump into our replay, which is 22 minutes into the game. 3-0 for Winter Fox yeah. in the Dragon. We're gonna pull that up for you, Freak. I'm gonna have you take this one uh, as it as it kind of shows exactly what we're talking about. A little bit of. Um, misplay and mispositioning by TDK. Yeah, so let's start the clip out and let's just sort of watch what the damage deals of TDK do because Seraph's gonna be fine no matter what. He's gonna be in the front line. You can see Seraph is in the front line. He's fighting Avalon, he's doing everything he can, but Louis GG in the back line. Okay, he's well positioned so far. That's fine. Glebe knocks up some guys, whatever, but uh, well, Smoothie gets blown up right away because you've got Ziggs and then Louis GG does get stunned by Helios. And then Louis GG stays to fight but the front line is already broken down at this point. And a lot of this actually is, okay, really good ult by Ziggs. He got a lot of early damage down. But also, it's interesting because as much as I was like, oh, you know, Ricochet, Sivir works out all right. But if your team is focused on killing people down as fast as possible, where you've got a champion like Ziggs, well, now you're seeing the power of crit, where you can break through the moon, you can break through the Gragas. Different strokes for different folks. Obviously, the Essence Reaver build did work in game one. But when you crush the front line that fast, you know, CS got all tech can just break through all your tanks. Yeah, I feel like this is one of those scenarios where we do look at the Louis GG build there and say, Essence Reaver not doing exactly what they need, as mm -hmm. you mentioned. They would have much rather had higher burst damage there, get through that Sejuani, be a little bit of a threat. But beyond that, even, I have to question the calls there, Zion, in their decision to remain and fight. When you have a Gragas and you have a Nami, there is the possibility after securing that dragon to disengage and get out. But we see them choose to stick around and fight. And then even as they realize the fight is going downhill, for example, Luigi G dashing into the pit as to back out with the team. Yeah, I mean, that fight itself wasn't actually the best example. There was a fight later on in the game where like just 
Urgot and, and Lucian just get hit with the two-man sigil, and it's gone right there. That was just a simple fact that, well, look, Zig's a lot of burst. He got a lot of damage right then. I mean, the Bruiser-type comp works if you actually get your fight set up, but, right, no Urgot swap. They didn't manage to misposition one of the big squishy backliners. Basically, Winterfox got to fight the battle correctly, where they got the damage output first, and Urgot didn't get to do Urgot things, so lo and behold, team fight, you know, with full damage output, where Urgot has no passive, actually a lot easier to fight. All right, well, up in the top lane, we saw Maokai versus Mundo. Mundo, very successful in the first game for TDK. A little bit less so here. I wouldn't say that the loss is attributed to the Mundo. But I think uh, the next question is, as um, we've noticed, Louis G with the potential to miss position, where could Seraph go in the top lane in order to put himself in more of a uh, position to outright carry the game if Louis G is not going to be able to do that? Well, I think the two biggest picks there were the Sivir, especially for TDK and the Ziggs. The Ziggs allowed um, Paul Bolter to scale super well in the late game, and the Sivir was just huge for TDK to just press ulti and go in, because I think when you have something as simple as Sivir, Sivir ulti, like any team can just be like, okay, Sivir ulti, even in solo queue, Sivir ulti, let's go in. And if Louis GG isn't on that, then they don't really have that go button. And maybe Seraph might need to play something more carry-oriented, but I think it would just be better to stay on that Cinder Hulk tank, stay on what they did well with the first game, and really prioritize that Sivir heavily because I think that's the most important pick for TDK. All right, cleaning up those individual positionings and plays, keeping the relative uh, team comp ideas intact. We'll keep it tuned right here. We're just a few minutes away from game three between TDK and Winter Fox with a spot in the NALCS Summer Split on the line. We'll be right back. My mind is telling me no, but, but my, my body, body. My body is telling me yes. What the f <laughs> In the back line can stay Seraph's there. Not dead. Here comes Louis now with the damage. Piercing light through Avalon as well as Glebe. They get taken down. Watching, watching, like, watching team fight. Cross, cross, cross. I know the Mundo, I know the Mundo. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. Cross, cross. Good, good. Lucian, 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 do flash, Lucian, do flash. Lucian, Lucian. Nice. Good. Straight for all tech. He gets flipped around and flashes oh! to the outside. Blown up is Louis XGG, but Alex is also getting hit up in the fray. All tech's getting hit up here, but I think he is just going to shred Alex each down. He does so. Kez is going to be the next focus. Whole Belter, 7 0 6. All tech, 6 0 5. Those two lanes flourish this game. <laughs> 